What's going on, sports card collectors? Happy Friday. Hopefully everybody's doing well, staying safe, and staying healthy. Today, I want to talk about eBay's new standard envelope. I wanted to show you how I um, package up or get my orders ready. Uh, for those of you that have seen my video um, about shipping out in a plain white envelope, I encourage you to go check that out. I no longer do that. I know there was people that were skeptical skeptical of using that. Um, number one reason was because there was no tracking. Number two reason is, is they felt that it wasn't um, really a secure way to ship. Um, I've seen some of your bigger names um, kind of bash that as well. Um, I've had, I had over six years of shipping experience working um, with a company with government clearance, shipping out anything, little components to radar jammers, you name it. So I, I have a little background in, in shipping um, as far as making sure things are packaged properly. And I had a 100% shipping success with plain white envelopes. So um, that says a lot um, in itself. But now I'm actually happy with the um, eBay standard envelope for anything under $20. I will tell you um, that I pretty much will only use that option for anything under $10. And you can really only do up to three cards, uh, especially for what I use, uh, because then it exceeds the weight. So 91, 91 cents um, is the max amount on that eBay standard envelope, which is primarily three cards for me. Um, that's with each card in a top loader. So what I thought I would do is show you uh, what I do to package up the card for eBay standard envelope um, and how I package it up and what I put it in and what my label looks like. I am not going to go through a step-by-step -step for eBay. Um, if you've shipped out orders before from eBay, you would just go to your sold items and hit print label, and then you would enter in the weight and the, the measurements of the envelope or cardboard envelope that you're using. So I'm assuming you already know how to do that. You should be able to know how to do that already. Um, and then when you put in the, the weight and the measurements and you hit, you know, enter on there, eBay standard comes up. That's my selection anyways for the listing. But the eBay standard envelope will come up and it'll either be, I think it's 51, 71, or 91 cents. Um, primarily my orders are two cards. So it's 71 cents. I charge 91 cents across the board. Um, just in case for some odd reason it weighs heavier than normal. I don't know why. Too much tape. Um, or the card is thicker. So... And then when you get into where people are combining orders, I immediately go up to first class. And then I usually will credit back the difference um, after they've paid for shipping, um, if they've paid too much. So what I do is, um, so I take my order. So we're going to use the Ohio State Buckeye mascot. So I, I put a piece of painter's tape. Please don't use scotch tape. That irritates me. But a piece of painter's, uh, piece of, uh, painter's tape on there. And then I take... I have an eight and a half by 14. It's illegal. Um, I like the uh, the squares that's on there. And then what I usually do is I'll open it up. Well, once I get it folded, I'll I have it all nice and neat, but I really put my usually my little thank you on there. And uh, what I do is I'll put the card on there. Yeah, I'm gonna waste some tape on there, but I think it's worth it for this video. Uh, for those of that haven't done the eBay standard envelope, and maybe this will break the ice for them. And I only do it on three sides just to hold it in. I really don't need to do it the four sides. So then I fold it up and then I fold it again and then I fold it again. And then I even do a little piece of tape right here and I roll it up so it's double sticky. And these are what I use. They're 5.75, so let's round up. They're six by nine photo mailers. They got the peel that's a cardboard. Um, so what I do is I actually will put my card inside in the middle so it's got the sticky in the back i'll peel that off and i'll fold it up and i'll put a piece of packaging tape across here and here on the seams and then this is what it looks like so keep in mind it's already in a top loader i have it folded up inside that eight and a half by 14 uh, legal paper and then when i print out my label from ebay and i crossed out the person's address 
Um, this one was for 71 cents. I think this was actually one card with 71 cents. But now it's got the tracking on there. And it isn't your typical tracking like a first class or priority mail. It tracks when it's been picked up and shipped, I believe it is, and when it's been delivered. It doesn't give you the all in between, but at least you've got that sense of comfort of knowing when it's been delivered. They can scan that. And it's got it's got its own tracking number up top here. So EMBA standard envelope tracking, and it's got my address and stuff on there. So um, what I would do is I use the, the peel and stick. It just makes it easier. But if you want to use a piece of paper and cut it and then use packaging tape, you can do that. But I would peel this off and I would set it right across there and then it's ready to go. So it looks something like that on top of the uh, the photo mailer. So to me, I, so far, I've had good luck with that. Um, yeah, it's not as cheap as buying a box of uh, legal size envelopes. Uh, but for me, the, this just system just plain works for me. So I just thought I'd do a quick video on that. I've had good success. It kills me to see cards for a dollar, dollar twenty-five, and then it's three dollars and eighty-five cents or four dollars and ten cents for shipping. I do realize it's going first class, but that was primarily for a tracking number. So now you've got some sort of tracking. You can charge a cheaper cost, which actually would allow you to move some of your lower end items. Um so that's just my tidbit in a nutshell. I'm sure there'll still be the uh, uh, individuals that are out there. They're going to say, you know, that's just not good. You don't ship cards out that way. Tell me why not. Because if anybody's ever gotten cards from Panini, especially if you use those bonus points, um, Panini ships me cards in a top loader with scotch tape panini does it's in scotch tape and they just put it in a small bubble mailer it's not wrapped in anything it's not in cardboard they just put it in a bubble mailer and it's a little teeny tiny bubble mailer about that big so um panini you know i i you know i'm not saying that they're they're necessarily the experts but i also will tell you this they don't have a problem shipping stuff in a top loader and a bubble mailer I'm putting it in a photo mailer in a top loader wrapped up in a legal piece of paper. I'm telling you that it's safe. There's going to be the person out there that says, well, what if it gets wet? It's going to have to be soaking in a mud puddle before it soaks through that cardboard. So it might get wet. But like I said, I've had good success. I have not had any issues with that. So um, on a side note, um, now that I've gotten through that fairly quick, I wanted to save some time so I could talk some more further. Um, there's still a lot of talk about all these grading companies out there. And um, and don't get me wrong, I'm still big on GMA. GMA was the first company I went with um, to grade my cards. And I think GMA's due is coming. Um, I, I think it still needs to wait until they upgrade their labels. Granted, there probably will be another price increase and people are going to be furious. People are furious now with the other companies. Um, you know, I've heard, you know, things like SGC drop the ball. Uh, maybe so. But I will tell you this. Um, Boca Raton's uh, SGC sub submission group on Facebook. If anybody wants it, I'll be happy to share the link with them. Um, I do my group submissions through them. So if you go through SGC yourself... Um, and if it's under $500 declared value, you're going to pay $25 a card. Going through the group submissions with Boca Raton, um, they charge $20 a card. You know, obviously, if you do a larger number, it's cheaper, but it's $20 a card. So you're saving five bucks, plus the individual delivers it to the door of SGC himself. And he has priority, so the turnaround times are a lot quicker than if you submit through SGC. So $20 a card. SGC. Am I sitting here telling you that SGC is the best company out there? No, absolutely not. But I still like that black tuxedo look on a lot of the cards. Not every card looks good. It's kind of like as HG, what is it, HGA now um, with their, their, their color forms. Those look sharp, but not with every card. Um, and if you pick the wrong selection, it doesn't make the card look either good either. So, um, you know, you got CSG, um, you know, BGS, I went to go see what it would do to submit a card through PSA. I'm not paying a hundred bucks for one card. And then if I go through the submission group that I'm part of, it's 95 bucks a card. I don't care what the return value is. I am not paying that much for a card. Um, you know, others have said it before. I can go submit with GMA and submit X amount of cards for the price of one and probably get a better return on those X amount of cards as opposed to just the one. So depending on what you're submitting, um, BGS, it was $85 for the card. And I forget what the shipping cost was. That was ridiculous. Also, 
So I'm okay with um, SGC right now at this point, HGA, I think it's HGA, geez, I can't even remember now, I drove a blank. HGA, you you can't just submit, you have to be accepted. They, they only do a certain limit. Um, I do have an account created with them, but they're still new. Um, I'm still a little curious because I've seen reports of them grading a car to nine and a half and it should have been, it might have been a bow, uh, bow bichette, whatever. Um, and it should have been an eight, some people have declared. So I'll wait on them. Um, you know, their technology, they're still trying to work out their tweaks. Uh, CSG, you know, they got their background with gaming cards and comic books. Um, they do the subgrades. They, 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 they may have a, a good following. And then you got the company in Canada, Mint, um, that, that also could have a good following as well. At the end of the day, um, the more the merrier, honestly, because you get one or two companies or three companies and you create this monopoly and then it's just ridiculous. Um, to me, I believe that PSA raising their price that they did to me is a power move. It's them puffing their chest out and flexing their muscles and saying, look at us, we're going to project this price up and, you know, people are going to get even extra return value, which probably in some cases they might. Um, but I think you're going to lose a lot of customers too. They're like, I just can't justify that amount. Um, or they're going to be able to submit one at a time instead of, you know, bulk orders. I don't know how people still can submit these bulk orders. Of course, if you're monetized on YouTube, which I am not, um, their money that you make off of that, you could afford a lot of these, these submissions. So, um, I, I, this is not my livelihood. This is a, a side thing for me. I have a full-time job. Um, if I didn't have a full-time job, then yeah, I, I would work, I would work the hell out of this, um, just because this would be my livelihood and this is what I make a, a living off of. And I know a lot of people do. So, um, you know, kudos to you. Um, I would love the ability to have my own card shop. Uh, and I know there's a lot of work into that and, and maybe I don't even understand probably the work that all goes into that, but I think it would be fun. It'd be fun to rub elbows and communicate and go to these card shows all over the place and, and meet other uh, card shop owners um, you know, cause we're in it together. Uh, we're not in it to be against each other. It's the same with the hobby and collecting. Um, it, I don't know if you guys realize this, but we're in this together. Um, you know, just because we have differences in who we collect and how we collect and how we grade and who we grade with, we're still in this together. Um, so I, I don't see anybody that's in this to see people fail or to see themselves, selves fail. We're in it to have fun, enjoy the collection, see what other people collect, and go from there and see what people rip out of packs. You know, you know, I, you know, I watch people ripping open these packs and, and getting these LeBron cards or these, you know, looking for the super rare and then getting them. And, it, you know, that's exciting because you can hear the excitement in their voice and the celebration. And that's what it's supposed to be about. So, I mean, it's just, it, there's still people out there ripping. And, and, you know, it's and it's all right natural to be upset for these card prices uh, for grading to be raised up. Um, and at the end of the day, you you still get to choose yourself individually whether or not you want to grade your card. And if it's out of your price range right now, then it's out of your price range right now. Or if it's you normally submitted 100 cards a month or every other week, um, but now you can only afford to do 20 cards, then then so be it. You know, you can still build up to it. Uh, somebody had said on one of their uh, YouTube channels that says, you know, if you don't have a process in play or you don't you don't have a plan, you're going to fail. You you have to plan what you're looking to do. If you're if you're grading 20 cards and you're making let's say $200 profit off of that, and then you're turning around and flipping some more cards, if you can make it so it's self sufficient, so you're not spending any money out of pocket, the hobby itself, if you're selling them for that matter, is is supporting it for what you do, then you can eventually build back up to 100 cards graded. It's just you're gonna have to start off slowly. Start off with 20 cards, turn that profit into 30 cards graded, turn that profit into 40 cards graded. It's gonna take time. It isn't like you're just gonna auto set all of a sudden in 24 hours. You're 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 cranking these things out. You know, with, with the repetition, um, the recognition, um, people starting to notice you, and yeah, you're going to start selling a little bit more. So it's it's a process, just like anything else. Um, this is a side business, if you want to call it for me. It's not my full time business. That's why I don't have so many videos out there. I would love to do videos. I I see guys have videos, two or three videos a day, or in, in two days, and it's like holy cow, you know. I mean, I suppose if I cut out some sleep, but I work nights. 
Um, so, you know, if I'm only getting four hours sleep during the day and I got to go back to work, uh, do I cut out an hour of sleep and get three hours to do a video? Uh, I don't know, you know, so um, it's it's hit or miss. Um, but but that's just my take. You know, again, at the end of the day, we all get to choose how, when, and who we want to collect. And then we get to choose who uh, we want to grow and grade with um, or not grade with. You know, I, I've seen some people take the stance of I'm going back to old school and I'm just sticking to raw. Well, I mean, you could go to um, the one touches, you know, if you want that that look there to hold it in place instead of the top loader. I mean, again, it's just personal preference. So, um I'm not going to ramble on too much longer. I don't want to keep you on too long. Guys, if you haven't subscribed, hit us up on Instagram. Um, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Give us a thumbs up. Um, hit the, the notification button so you're notified next time we have a video up. Listen, all that is free, uh, but it definitely helps us out. Uh, what I have noticed and I'm going to get to next is uh, a reminder that we have the um, NBA Hoops uh, giveaway blaster box sealed. Brand new, not even opened. Um, that I'll be doing the drawing for on Saturday, March 27th. Um, I know a lot of people have commented they're pretty stoked. What I found interesting was not last night, but the night before, I all of a sudden had this within like a, I don't know, 20 to 30 or 45 minute window of uh, people responding to that video that I announced that giveaway that they have to respond to comments on and subscribers. It was like uh, 26 people subscribed in like 20 minutes. I'm like, that's pretty cool. A couple of them, you know, said congratulations on 500 subscribers. And I think at one point it said 502 subscribers. I'm like, well, that's pretty cool. You know, 500 subscribers. Um, I've been doing this almost a year is when I started my YouTube channel. So almost a year. And, uh, then all of a sudden, a half hour later, I lost 26 subscribers. So um, just be aware that I have my list of subscribers. And when I do the drawing, if you're not on my subscriber list, you are not going to win this 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 prize here, this NBA Hoops Blaster Box. Because I, I see what you're doing is you commented, you make it look like you subscribed, and then you unfollowed or unsubscribed me. So... Um, if you think that you're just going to comment, subscribe, and then unsubscribe, and I'm not going to catch that, I'm going to catch that. I've already gone into my account to, to print out my subscribers. And if you're not on the list, I will draw another name. So that's just not fair for the individuals that were truly genuine to follow me. Um, I, I, you know, I'm not the, uh, most advanced out there as far as my thing. I don't have these great big huge music introductions with cartoons or anything like this. Um, I'm just straight to the point. Um, I try to talk plain English, plain and simple so that everybody understands. And, and I just try to keep it real with everybody. But you know, I have an opinion just like everybody else does. I have a viewpoint just like everybody else does. I played basketball in high school. I played basketball out of high school. I have a basketball background. I coach basketball and I work a full-time job and I do cards on the side. And if I can just turn this while making it too wobbly, I mean, I have what, two, four, six, eight, nine stacks of cards there that are waiting for me to take pictures of and put on eBay. I just ordered another four row box, uh, storage box for cards because I'm exceeding. I have four boxes of cards, probably 6,000 cards waiting for me to take pictures of and put on eBay also. But all of my cards that I have right now are all in penny sleeves and top loaders. So they're ready to go. Um, whether I start bundling them up or what I do or shipping them off, I'm not big on shipping them off to other places. Um, I just assume if I'm going to do the work, I just assume do the work and have it on my eBay store. So yeah, I know it takes time. Um, my goal is to always try to list um, 10 new cards a day. Um, so that's 70 cards a week to add to my webpage or my eBay store. Sorry. So guys, I appreciate it. Don't forget, I'll put the link to the video um, about our giveaway so you can get in on that. Uh, this this is real, guys. This is a 2020-21 NBA Hoops Blaster Box sealed, unopened, that I will be giving away Saturday, March 27th. Uh, so be looking for that. Make sure you follow the directions in that video. And uh, hopefully this uh, eBay standard envelope video helped out some, maybe ease some minds in, in who, how, how everybody else is doing or is anybody else doing it. And the, and the success rate, I have not had any issues. I've been shipping since this came out with the eBay standard. Majority of my orders are going out that way unless they're bulk or, or larger orders. And I have had 100% success rate so far. 
that all vary because I'm sure there might be somebody else there that did have a problem. I have not. So um, I did not have any issues with the plain white envelope either. So that's all I have, guys. I hope you have a great day. Stay safe. Stay healthy. We'll see you next time.